Okay, uh, welcome back. So in the afternoon, we have a great lineup of talks about different applications of TVM. You will hear first from AWS folks on how they are using TVM, their production pipeline. And then there will be talks from UDAP sample folks about how do you do uh, microcontroller inference and low bit optimizations and data type optimization. So first, let's welcome Ida Wang. He is a tech lead in AWS. In particular, he's leading the uh, AWS TVM effort, and we're going to hear more about uh, their effort on optimizing CN inference using Amazon Sage Mechanism. All right, thank you, Tenchi. Thanks, everyone. Uh, my name is Ida. I'm from AWS. Today, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about how we optimize. Well, so the, the, the title says that. So basically, um, you know, uh, how we optimize CNN model inference using the service called Amazon SageMaker Neo. So here, um, you know, we, we love TVM. So in the very beginning, a Amazon as um, a group, we are the active industrial player of the TVM repo, and we have been contributing ever since. Um, so based on TVM, so mainly based on TVM, we build up a service called Amazon SageMaker Neo. So which, uh, using which you can optimize your machine learning model inference to play, to execute efficiently on different kind of hardware. So today here, as part of this tutorial, we will show you, um, especially uh, my colleague Zhi here, will show you how we use our service to optimize this CNN model inference, and then we will deploy it as a demo, we deploy it on this raw device. Um, so this is NVIDIA, just a nano developer board. So um, we, will, we will see how we can run uh, model efficiently on this board as one of the example devices that we use. But before that, I'd like to share with you some of our work uh, been doing been, uh, be doing at Amazon. So first of all, uh, our machine learning stack at a glance, you know that, uh, as you may know, MXNet is the different framework of choice of Amazon. And on top of MXNet, we are building a front-end interface called Gluon, which would help, help uh, hopefully help you easy the programming. And in addition, like on top of Gluon, we are building toolkits for specific targets uh, like CV and NLP. So actually, the models that we are going to compile, optimize, and deploy is from the Gluon CV model zoo. And actually, theory this uh, morning when she, when he did the Vita stuff, he also used Gluon's uh, model, uh, models from the Gluon's, Gluon model zoo. But, uh, you know, but this is the tools that we, uh, we pr pr uh, prepared for people who would like to deal with the man manipulated model. But if you are a scientist, a data scientist, you do not want to directly manipulate the model, you just want to use it. Amazon also pr uh, pr uh, prepare a series of tools that can help you do that. So like Amazon SageMaker, this is a fully managed service that you can use it to train your model with like say one click and with proper data pre-processing, post-processing and such. And when it comes to do the model inference on some kind of device, then you, know, you can use Amazon SageMaker Neo. So what is Amazon SageMaker Neo? So we are Amazonian, so uh, our tradition is we, we work backwards from our customers. So from the customers, we understand that people would like to say that, well, now, you know, there are a lot of fancy model trained in the literature. We just want to use it. We want to use it in our scenario. So we have our customized platform. So we have our customized, uh, uh, like, use case. How can you help us to get that model and make it efficient to somewhere? So this is like we, what we have heard from the customers. So we know that there are a lot of targets that we want to do. We it, potentially we can deploy our model, and we have a lot of like potential customers, external and internal. So this is the thing that we want to do, and you can see that well, this seem, like naturally is what TVM is doing if it's in the uh, deep learning domain, right? So this, is, so this is basically what we are working on. For deep learning, SageMaker Neo also works on other machine learning models, but for deep learning models, we build up on top of TVM. So on, top, uh, in, on the top, we can take different kind of like deep learning framework as the input, including our own 
uh, MXNet and uh, also community popular uh, like TensorFlow and PyTorch models and using TVM to do a bunch of optimizations as we discussed in the morning so that we can deploy to the hardware, including Intel, NVIDIA, ARM, and even the uh, in-house ASIC that we are working on. And in addition to that, we also talked to uh, other uh, chip vendors like Qualcomm, Cadence, uh, so on and so forth to, to, to uh, deploy our models there. And as I just mentioned, we are not only using TVM, we are the contributors of TVM. So, uh, so we make a number of our own customizations and, and uh, uh, improvement to the stack and it's all also open source. So here I would like to share with you some of our work here. So the first part is we call it joint optimization of CNN models. This work is going to be published in the Usenix ATCDC year, so it's just in three weeks later in, later in Seattle. So in this work, the basic idea is like we observe that when you go to uh, optimize a CNN model, the existing work mostly focusing on optimizing the computationally intensive kernels like convolution. So like depicted in the yellow, uh, the green circle there, so uh, libraries like QDNN, MQDNN for different platforms, they would try to optimize a single operator perfectly to get a solution. But we know that if you extend your scope from a single op to the entire network, you may figure out that a local optima might not necessarily lead to the global optima. The reason is that in order to do a convolution very well, you would need to manipulate the data layout. But if you have different convolutions in the network between the convolution, if you, you, you may choose different data layout for the local optima, then this will bring in additional overhead of data transformation. So if you model this part in, into your optimization, you will be able to get to a global optima. So for details, I will not be able to uh, go into that for the sake of time, but welcome to uh, read our paper or even attend uh, the session in ATC. So this is some selected results of our, our work. So the yellow bar is the results that we can get on top of TVM and uh, higher is better. And you may notice that for example, for AMD CPUs, we do not, you know, uh, the, the OpenVINO solution sometimes is better. This is just because we nicely pick something that they are doing well. So if you look into the, our results, so the, uh, some other like baselines they may, may not perform consistently well across models, across platforms. So our solution basically uh, has this uh, benefit that you would be able to get consistently reasonable good performance out across models and, and, and platforms. And the next work that I would like to talk a little bit is about our unified solution for integrated GPUs. So this is also some based on some notifi uh, notifi uh, uh, observation that we, we have for the, from the customers, like we know that people are more and more pushing the effort to the edge to try to do some model inference on the, at the edge devices. But the problem here is like at the edge, you would have a lot of different kind of architectures as the, your choice. For example, for integrated GPUs, you may have uh, products from Intel, from Nvidia, from ARM, so on and so forth. How would you uh, get a sort of uh, generic solution to fulfill all these kind of different architectures. So this is the problem that we are tackling in this paper. And this is the, uh, as you can see, this is the architectural diagram of our work. So it's also based on TVM. And here, what we, what we were doing is like, we extend some IR at T in TVM to make it, uh, to, to, to make it efficient for the CNN models, we add in some optimization for the vision specific operators like NMS and such for running efficiently on those integrated GPUs. And then we uh, leverage the work that we talked in the morning like auto TVM and the work that I just talked about the graph level tuning to co-optimize uh, to, to co to co the 
uh, neural network on the integrated GPUs. And as one more option, if we feel that there's some operator that is not really possible or it's not very feasible to run it on, to run on inter inter uh, integrated GPUs, we can also fold it back to the uh, accompanying CPUs of the machine to uh, easy your, your programmability. So this is a very engineering work, but the good thing here is like TVM lays a very great foundation for this kind of optimization so that based on which it's possible for us to quickly try out new things for our uh, own purpose. And although it's very engineering, this is of great practical use. So this like, is the right thing that our customers want. And also some of the results here just directly uh, from the paper, and it's going to be published in ICPP also this year in August. So um, something like you may also notice is, for example, on, um, on ARM GPU, Mardi GPU, for the object detection models, you find that our result is, is worse than things like uh, ACL. So here, the, you know, the reason is like, it's not a reason, it's the reality is like, if you want to get to this kind of result, it requires sophisticated engineering, engineering effort. When we were working on this paper, we would try to find a baseline for Mali GPU, and then we look into the literature and the GitHub and such, the open source domain, to try to find a baseline solution. Unfortunately, we cannot find it, so eventually what we are doing, what we are doing is we just construct the model by ourselves and register and do the graph level optimization using TVM and then register those uh, operators to ACL. So we have a very sophisticated uh, programmer doing this, this EG Liu sitting there. So he's also a PMC member of TVM. So, and he spends quite a few time, quite, a, quite some time to, to work on that. And he just frequently got back to me saying that, why should I do this? It's like, it's difficult and it's, so you can imagine that it's very struggling for people to use the vendor provided library to construct it, some efficient solution for us for CNN model inference on this even mainstream hardware devices. So our solution, you know, using our solution is then it will be easier to get a comparable performance out from these devices. So before we go to the hands-on demo. The last thing I would like to mention to you because of is ISCA here. So this is our in-house ASICs that uh, we are working on. It's called AWS Inferentia. So this chip, as you may know, it was announced last year and would be uh, its general availability will be sometime later this year. So this is our in-house machine learning inference uh, chip would be run on the cloud, and us, you know, we are uh, as as the compiler team, we are working closely with the inferential team on the compiler software stack support of this chip. And unfortunately, I will not be able to reveal too much detail on that. But the reason I bring it up, I just would like to convince that the things that we are working on is cutting edge with real in, real impact and um, would be very exciting, a lot of fun. So I think, and a spoiler to the last slide, I'm, we are going to mention that we are hiring. So the thing is that I would like to convince that, if you are convinced that we are working some, on something that is interesting and would be exciting to you, welcome to come to talk to us, then we are here on site. And that's it from my part, and then the next thing, like, Zhi would uh, go with you on a demo of how to use Amazon SageMaker Neo to compile, optimize the model, and run it on this um, uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano. Thanks. Um, hello everyone, yeah, my name is Z. Uh, I'm from AWS as well. Um, so 
Ida has covered like the Sage, uh, SageMaker Neo pipe, um, like the, the concept of it. So this is the pipeline of our compilation and optimization of models. Uh, users like they can if they have an Amazon account, they can log in and they can like provide the pre-trained models, and they can also uh, specify some um, compilation configurations like what kind of uh, for frameworks you're you're compiling and like uh, the size of your uh, input and this kind of stuff, then uh, they can just uh, like click on the um, website and like to to compile the model. Or we can also provide you like a console uh, a command line and stuff. Then you can also work on that. Uh, after the compilation, um, the uh, SageMaker um, Neo pipeline will upload your like optimized results or models as a artifact to the S3 bucket, which is also a IWS service. Then there are two pipelines to run your uh, um, compiled model. One of them is through the Docker image, which is integrated in the SageMaker Neo service, and it will like do automatically. It will automatically um, deploy your model on various platforms. And another one is that you can download the compiled model or the artifacts from the S3 bucket, and you can uh, deploy it directly onto uh, your target hardware. Uh, that's another demo we are doing like on the, near, uh, on the nano um, platform. So first, we can like, take a look at the um, pipeline. So um, this uh, notebook is created using some um, AWS internal services, majorly uh, using the like the uh, Bottle Three and the SageMaker APIs. Um, if you have an account, you probably can log in and, uh, and do the demo. But if you not, probably you cannot directly do through your um, your your notebook or your like laptop because you need these services. Um, so first of all, uh, we have trained, we have compiled. Uh, a, we have a pre-trained model, and we can download it somewhere if you upload it to your, uh, like, to somewhere. Or it could be, like, just from your S3 bucket. Uh, to save your time, I just put it in the same directory we're having for this notebook. Um, so this is just to download a pre-trained ResNet, uh, ResNet 18 model from Gulong CV. Um, then the next one is to like using some SageMaker service like Bottle 3 and, and, and SageMaker uh, EC2 uh, services. Um, for, the, for this, we need to get a, like a, a, um, some execution role, which is specific for SageMaker. And also, you want to specify which bucket you're using and which, where you want to, up, uh, to down, download your model, your portrayed the model, and where you want to upload it after you compile the job. Um, like there are some um, model specific data here. Like what's the target device you want to compile the model for? Here we just use um, just use C5 instance, and the model is from MXNet. Um, and also this is the version of the model. And in the end, you have like um, where you want to save your model if you, if it's compiled. Um, after that, so we can continue uh, to. With the configuration, we can compile the model and using some um, APIs here. Um, here, you want to specify your way you want to get the model and what's the, the, the input or the, the data shape or the input size of the model and also where you want to upload your compiled model so, and also your target service. Um, so after doing that, we can just compile it. Uh, it takes some time because uh, it, it, it needs to like uh, deploy. Uh, it, it needs to find the S2 instance and do the compilation job for this model. Um, we set like a maximum uh, limit, which is like 300 seconds. If this is not done, then the job will be killed. Then we might be like if we continuously uh, kill some jobs, we might get some tickets. So. Um, the engineers internally will know that something bad is happening, so it's happening, so then we need to take into it. Hopefully we can succeed. 
Otherwise, my colleague will be like in Palo Alto, will get a call. <laughs> uh, just probably if we fail once, it's not, it's not gonna be that bad. If we fail like twice or three times in like one or two minutes, which means probably some customers have, are very angry about that, so you will be, uh, get caught. Um, so if we finish the decompilation, we haven't yet, and then we need to create a, a prediction endpoint, which is going to like to uh, deploy the model for some like uh, inference uh, for some uh, for inference. Um, in order to create the model, oh, congratulations! We, yeah, we are done. Uh, then, so in order to do that, so uh, we need to create some endpoints. Um, then that two, there, there is like a, a to create the endpoint, we need to specify two functions in the um, in the service, which is to uh, which one of them is the neo preprocess, and another one is the post process. Preprocess is going to take your some of the like images or like payloads from your requests, and they are going to. Uh, resize your image, something like resize your image, and also it's going to like output in a uh, NumPy array for us to use as input of, for TVM, as we showed this uh, like um, in this morning's tutorial. And the post process is going to um, get the like the prediction results, and they are going to uh, prepare it and and get it as a response for the users to get it back. Uh, Let's run this. So um, we need to upload this script to like for pre-processing and the post-processing to the S3 bucket as well. And then we can like, get it later for deployment. So we put this as a, a unit R. Uh, now we can create a model record, uh, which is, the, the, now we create a model, which majorly what we do is that we want to select a, a Docker image, so to, to use as, uh, to use for serving. Um, the model image will contain the like S3 region, like, and also some um, other strings used to identify which image we want to use in the, for, for, for inference. Uh, so there are some uh, strings we used here, mainly like uh, region and framework and also target, because we have uh, different uh, images for different targets and for different frameworks. Uh, so we have to get the correct one. And also here, uh, the image says, uh, um, when you create the model, you want to say you want to know where you want to up, upload this model after you after you doing this inference. So now we create the endpoint. Now we are, and so we create the the model. Now we want to do a little bit more configuration. Like uh, what's the instance you want to use to to run this model? Uh, now we as we compiled this model for M5 for C5 instance. So we specify the type as C5 here, and we need we can just create this um, configuration. So after using this configuration, later we can just create endpoint. In this endpoint, we are going to like uh, launch a, a a dark image to use that serving. So this is going to take a while because we need to um, first we need to get the image and we need to start the image and that's probably gonna take one, two minutes at least. So um, after that, then we can uh, just like um, give it some inputs and do the inference. Um, but this one is gonna take a while. Yeah, the cat is also waiting here. Uh, Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> no, he's not in Plato probably. Um, probably at the same time, I can probably like switch to this demo and later on we can come back and see the results for serving because uh, it's, it's waiting.
so this is the Jetson, uh, this is the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, and we have we have like already um, compiled the model, so we have the artifacts, right? Now we actually we uh, copied these artifacts to this service, and what we want to do is that we want to use TVM runtime to do the inference on it. Um, so AWS Neo, uh, SageMaker Neo created another, um, not, not a service, probably the sub-service, or a, like a project called DLR, Deep Learning Runtime. So it's like a wrapper for uh, the TVM runtime, and also it includes uh, a XGBoost runtime called TreeLight in it. So we can do inference on different um, frameworks. Um, now, um, So um, what you can do here is like we have this DRR service and the DRR right now could be just uh, pip installed. So uh, since this, uh, this board uh, doesn't have Wi-Fi module, so I cannot do um, pip install here online, so, but I have already installed it. But this one could be easily done just by this line of code. Um, now we're doing this inference for a SageMaker, uh, for a ResNet 50 model. Um, and the next thing we do after we install the um, after we install the uh, DRR, which is a runtime for the inference, and we can uh, create a, a a a model which is a DRR model. Um, what we do is now we can create this model. Then this model will later on take the input and do inference. Um, now it's down, and. Um, yes. Uh, after this is done, we can the next. Sorry, I cannot see it. Oh, the next thing is that we can give it the inputs. Now we get a get a nice cat here, and we get the image of it. And then what we do is that we want to do some uh, process on this image. Okay, so here we take the image and do some resize work, and also we um, pre-process it. Um, and the input of this one be like NCHW, which is uh, the, the batch is one, and uh, uh, the image size, uh, the, the channel is three, and height and width are 224. After this is done, then we should be able to do the inference. So we do some um, iterations for warm up and like do 100 iterations to get the inference here. Oh, it's still computing, yeah. So the inference time here, it's like uh, 70 milliseconds for, for this ResNet 50, so on this nano device. Um, now we can also compute the um, peak, the peak flops, G flops of this device. So, um, like this, uh, for for Nano, it's the peak peak uh, computer uh, compute performance is like 472 uh, G flops, and um, which is in you know, FP16, which is like 236 in FP32, and we can 
get this um, the, the total number of flops, G flops for ResNet 50. Um, we in TVM we have a pass to get this uh, counts, which is around four gig. Um, so which is three point eight gig actually. So it's uh, in um, for MAC. So it's going to be in total. It's going to be seven point six um, operations in total. Then we can compute this um, peak performance as following. So we divided seven point six by the number of uh, by the by the average mean uh, by the average inference time we get from the inference, and we compute it. Um, and the results shows that it's the average, uh, the peak performance we get is around 46% for the peak performance, um, which is not bad. It's pretty good, actually. And, uh, and last, we can do the inference to get the result here, um, which it's, yeah. So that's the uh, demo for the uh, inference on nano device. Um, which is very simple using some like TVM APIs and with uh, some pre-trained model for some compiled models. So um, at this point, we should be able to Yeah, at this point, our inference here is finished. Uh, so we created this. Huh? It's still creating? Oh, and I see. And I need to log back again. Yeah, probably, probably just, okay, let's see. Could not. Oh, I cannot get it back. <laughs> oh, it's not, not, oh, I see. Sorry, sorry for the reading. No, it's here. Probably we can just directly click on this and see if it works. Yeah, the endpoint should be already down, but then it's not updated for the print. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I didn't sign back. That's why. Yeah, the, the endpoint now is in service. That's what we just created. Um, I 
So that's usually happen in demo. Something's bad. Uh, no, I cannot because, yeah, so we can, because this is in service, uh, so we can just click on the, on the, on this box to, to, to do the inference. Now we can get the result. Um, that's what for the demo, but I cannot do this again, otherwise we need to wait here for a few minutes, but it's in service right now. We can see it from this console. Uh, and the same kind of job can be done also from the, um, like for the SageMaker inference, we have a nice, not really that nice uh, console here. So you can specify your job and also you can specify your role, like you want to write something to S3 bucket or something like that. And later on, you can select your, um, your model and create the configuration. This is exactly what we did in the command line. And then you select the output configuration, then you can just compile it in this one click um, button. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And at this point, we are happy to take any questions if you have. Oh, there's some takeaways, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, so directly you go to the third point we are hiring, <laughs> and we have a happy hour uh, on Monday if you are still here. So let's uh, welcome anyone like who is interested in Amazon, what we are doing, and like and also being our customer, being our like potential employees, that like whatever, you're welcome to attend. And also I was told that we would have a booth that from Monday to Wednesday, somewhere near the cafe, so welcome to stop by whenever you, have, you, got, you get a chance. And I guess we have a few minutes. If you have any questions, we are happy to take. So the question is, what's the difference between this GPU and the normal GPU? I guess you mean the GPU on the cloud, like the discrete GPU. So for this particular one, it, there's not much difference because they are all from NVIDIA. But it, this one is a more like an edge side GPU, we call it mobile GPU, integrated GPU, or whatever. So it has like a lower power, lower flops, but it, it still use CUDA, so not much difference. The main thing, like more, I guess, like more interesting thing is you use something like ARM GPU, then you are all of a sudden using another architecture, using another set of like uh, driver like OpenCL, so then the difference will be more significant. But here it's not much difference, yes. You mean, you mean the integrated GPU thing that we are working on? So it's not, it, it's not, it's, it's different from Vita. So Vita is the FPGA and ASICs uh, platform target. So here our target is in integrated GPUs. But in terms of the, the that top level, level thing, like from the relay side part, it's basically the same thing because we are all under TVM. Uh, yeah, what, what, what do, what new here do you mean? What's the new things that Neo would provide, you mean? So it's, and for the deep learning compiler per per step perspective, there's not much new things, like if you compare Neo with TVM. Neo is basically, you can imagine as like a wrapper of TVM to make it as a service that you can directly use on the cloud. So the hope here is that even you do not know much about TVM and about deep learning, you will still be able to use, the, use it as a service by click a few buttons. So this is what Neo does. Yeah, but if from the technical perspective, Neo, 
uh, there's not much things beyond TVM in Neo in terms of different compiler. We, as the Neo service like builder, we also work on TVM. So our contribution directly go to the upstream TVM. So th th that's it. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you.